and uh, continue recording over here. Do we have any questions before we, we start? Any questions, anyone? Um, when will uh, the midterm grades be posted? I'm a very slow marker, so probably um, the earliest uh, Saturday night, uh, latest Monday morning or Monday afternoon. Okay. Also, okay. Uh, I see you updated some workshop marks, but then um, uh, for some reason there's a gap for me. Uh, if, there, that... if there is a case for anyone that you see your, your workshop marks are not there, uh, for some reason probably I didn't get your um, submission, but you, I'm sure that you have a confirmation email with all the stuff attached to it, right? I think so. Yeah, you should have it. Like you should always check to make sure that it's submitted. So forward me those uh, confirmation emails, please. Just go to your account, forward it to me. I'll receive it. Then I'll know that uh, you have missing workshop marks and I'm going to fix all those things. When everything is updated and it's done, um, I will send an announcement that all the marks are updated or up. And if there's anything missing, let me know and so on and so forth. So um you know, we will see all those things uh any other question okay so before uh we begin at every week on mondays at 10 o'clock um if a new submission if a new milestone for a for um project is submitted we're going to have a review session at, at an overview session at 10 o'clock in the morning every single monday so be aware of that and uh so um, you know that it's going to be up there and the uh, and the links for all those things um are going to uh go right into the project so um <sighs> So if you go to uh, the project, you will see that right at the top over here, it says watch overview for this. So these are the ones that you if you click, it shows the overview for every single milestone that we have. I did it like this so we don't waste any class time going through the milestones. And uh, oh, I'm going to have an overview as soon as it comes up so you are ready for it and you understand how everything is working. Um, is everybody OK with this? <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> uh, let's start. The first thing that I want to talk about is now that we are getting into um, inheritance and functions and hierarchy and stuff like that, we better put our acts together and make things more object oriented as we were going. I started using uh, a module called utils.h, uh, which I had some, what is this? It says not found. Did I miss anything? No, it's there. Hmm. Just a second. I want to see why is it not. Okay, so let's uh, create the. This is. Oh, I have two of. Oh, this one is SDRN compare. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, so I had utils with all this stuff added in our um, uh, in in every lecture that I had, and I used these utilities instead of using string header files. So, uh, and and we added few things just uh, to to demonstrate how uh, we can have our uh, toolbox carried with us from project to project, from uh, work to work. So all the things codes that we have written that applies to everything, we can reuse them. So this utils is the thing that uh, well, we use along with uh, with uh, uh, our lectures, and you can use any of the code over here that comes handy. Some of them are extremely incomplete and bad, so please fix it. But anything that you think it's usable, you can use in your utils uh, when you are doing your project or your workshops or anything like that. So are we okay with this? All right, so now that we are okay with this, let's see how we can actually make this utils thingy more object-oriented. All these things that we have are 
tools that are kind of not related with each other and they belong to a toolbox that we want to carry around as we are doing our projects. <coughs> as we are doing our project so that's what I'm going to do I'm gonna actually put it in a toolbox and the toolbox over there I'm gonna call it because it's a utils module I'm gonna actually call it a class utils so I'm gonna put everything that I have in here in a class called utils so it's not gonna be mistaken with anything else and I'm gonna make them public so they are usable and uh, because of that then I don't need to change the name because the two lower I have one in st uh, standard header uh, um, in what should we call it in um, uh, C uh, the, the string header file I capitalize these things but we don't need to do that now, the example that I have over here for this was with the SDR end copy that we have so I'm gonna change that one and I'm gonna show you the final product for changing everything so I have an SDR end copy over here and I'm going to just change that one. So I'm going to bring it up over here. So instead of SDR N copy with capital, I'm going to make it SDR co N copy with lowercase, exactly as what it has in uh, string header file. But now, because it's a member of utils, it's never going to get confused by that. And I'm going to come back over here in my utils. <coughs> so let's put things one by one in here. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to start with a string copy and then bring everything else in. So, so that's that. So I start with SDR N copy, put it in a package, then I'll bring everything else in. So SDR N copy is now part of utils. And now I can come to my utils.cpp, get the SDR N copy. And say that SDR N copy of mine, I'm going to put it up over here, belongs to the class utils and I'm gonna do it like that so not nothing is different over here than what we had before the only difference is that the function now belongs to the utils class so uh, uh, and it should work the same way which means in here if I want to use it I have to instantiate utils to something like let's say ut in here and in here I can say ut dot sdr and copy and it works exactly the same way and sdr and copy copies uh, a string into a target up to certain amount of characters and it will not null terminate it we know that so if I if I run the program like this you will see that it works and it actually copies Lisa over there but the rest still stays because I did not null terminate it and that's how I put it in a in a toolbox called UT are we okay with this all right now that we have done this and it's actually in that one um, obviously um, I would like this this is a like a crazy thing that every single one time I want to instantiate the toolbox I want my toolbox to be ready for me if I'm including my utils.h. So instead of doing something like this, in utils.cpp I create a, u a global function, a global uh, uh, class, and I'm going to call it utils ut. So this is a, a, a file scope, file scope uh, object. And this file scope object is only visible in utils.cpp. Are we okay with this? Okay, to make this thing global, so the, what is file scope, to give it access to other files, I'm going to go to utils.h at the bottom of the class, and I'm going to bring it at the bottom over here. I'm going to actually tell to everybody, everyone who's including our utils.h that there is an external object created out of utils called ut be aware it's there and use it if you need to now if I do something like this the ut that I have inside utils.cpp uh, uh, to be uh, changed to global by extern statement in utils.h so now if I actually go back in my program.cpp I do not need to utilize anything because I 
included utils.h and utils.h is telling me a utility ut is instantiated out there in utils.cpp uh, it can simply access it and it works perfectly for me as we see are we okay with this obviously doing all these things now I could do that before too but now I can actually make things more organized like for example I can have an SDR copy of uh, let's actually show you the final result so we got the idea that uh, what I want to do right are we okay all right now I'm gonna show you the final product in a class that I created in a new thing so this is how we began so let's save all these things this is uh, how the utils work. so the final res final product of this will be what you see now I created a, a new item um, set as startup project so I create a class over here called animal that represents an animal like any type of animal and what I did I brought my utils over here but if you look at utils now everything over here they are first of all all, all lowercase and then um, um, obviously I made them constant because they are not changing the utils if later on I create a utility function that needed some kind of a state in here that I needed to keep then I would do it but these functions are not changing the utils so I made it they made them all const also I got rid of those ends that you had SDR n copy SDR n compare because we can overload a function with their arguments in C++ I don't need to call one SDR compare and the other one SDR n compare if it is SDR compare I just add the length for it and it works and I now have three versions of SDR copy one that is does SDR copy with from source to destination that null terminates the destination and the other one that actually uh, goes up to length but this one unlike SDR n copy will null terminate it so what well, let me actually do this I'm gonna go in here and copy this utils of mine back into the previous one so let me just go to the directory in here and get the utils copy it I'm just copying this these two that I have and overwrite what we had what we start what we changed in here so I'm gonna put it right over here I'm gonna say paste so it replaces the two utils that we have in here and let's go back to our main to see what changes I made so you can use those utils, this utils, anywhere you want. Bring it to the project, do whatever you want to do. These are, uh, and add anything that you want to it. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to say a set as startup project. Why can't I find this thing quickly? There you go, set as startup project. Now if I come back in here, as you see when I do SDR n copy, obviously it copies Lisa but I can change that to SDR copy now with three arguments and what it does it actually uh, not mm, it gives me an error what is the error it says unresolved yada yada SDR copy oh so I don't have it let's actually add it <laughs> so um, I'm gonna come to utils and add that one so I'm gonna have an SDR oh I do have it SDR copy with three arguments why it says it's it doesn't str copy with three what did happen unresolved am I go to the finishing what's going on here okay now I'm going to say ut dot str n copy actually let's bring str n copy U 
utsdr n copy so that should call sdr n copy Look, I thought that you removed the n no 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 I didn't remove it I just added an extra function for some reason it doesn't recognize my utils I don't know why let me rebuild and see what's going on rebuild now it's okay now let's run it oh okay something was wrong with Visual Studio it didn't update I'm sorry I just updated my Visual Studio and there's a bug for it in it um, anyways I just rebuilt everything and it's okay now I'm gonna go SDR copy and do it so it's with three and as you see now it actually null terminates it so uh, this utils of mine now has three SDR copies one SDR copy that uh, copies everything from source to destination the other one copies copies from source to destination up to certain length but it null terminates it and I created SDR n copy in case I don't want to null terminate so I don't have to add that ugly statement ever after every single copy that I add over there and say um, SDR 4 is equal to 0 so that's that uh, are we okay with this okay so now that we know what utils is doing and go through the functions and see what they are uh, I am going to start talking about the animal thingy. So, so we have an animal for ourselves in here, and that represents an, an, an abstraction for an animal for me. And what it does is a very simple thing. Uh, it, uh, it creates an animal. An animal has a name up to 41 characters, 40 characters, obviously, because it's null terminated. Um, it has a default constructor that sets the, the name to nameless. <clears throat> Let me just bring them both in. Okay. And it has um, a query that returns the name of the animal as you see it has name that it returns the animal name it has uh, a modifier that sets the name to whatever it is which uses utsdr copy to copy up to 40 characters so we know it's there is no uh, um, <laughs> so we know there is no uh, uh, um, extra uh, characters being copied into the array and crash our program so that's what it does and we say our animal can act like an animal it can move like an animal it can make a sound like an animal and uh, I'm removing an animal so I put over here debugging statements and I use the exact same strategy that I had for the utils being global so in my uh, animal.cpp I create a boolean type called debug and I set it to false and I make it available to all the things that include animal.h and therefore I can turn the <clears throat> debugging on and off by default that debug is false but in main I can actually uh, set it to true or false so um, what happens over here is very simple I have uh, I set uh, the debug to true as you see SCDS debug I'm saying to, to know it's a debug that belongs to SCDS but then I'm gonna create an animal called Buffy <clears throat> and uh, I'm gonna ask Buffy to act move and make a sound and then I'm gonna show the animal and that's gonna be my N so to walk through it <clears throat> this is what happens um, the debug becomes true so it shows the error messages and then it uh, let me uh, bring this over here so I can have output displayed at the same time okay so um, now let me run it one more time so yeah there we go so now it comes over here then it comes in here assignment at the moment of creation what is assignment at the moment of creation people what is assignment at the moment of creation Pavel remember What is assignment at the moment of creation? She. Initialization. 
initialization in it which means is a call to what uh the default yes the de uh, not the default the one argument constructor okay one argument assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a constructor and especially in one argument constructor so so assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor okay we have to always remember that okay so assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor which will be this one it actually goes in here now it sets the as you see it's one argument constructor sets the name to uh, uh, gets the buffy the name uh, uh, bef bef because I initialized to zero it first clears a name uh, whatever it is you see there's garbage in it as soon as I goes through it now it's empty and now it calls the modifier to set the name to whatever the name is so it comes in here copies the value into M name now M name becomes Buffy then it comes out and it actually um, prints a debugging statement saying creating Buffy the animal and it comes out so now Buffy the animal is created now it's gonna say act it's gonna act like an animal now it's gonna say move it's gonna move like an animal sound like an animal and as soon as I pass the information to show animal it's gonna work the same way so it's gonna come up and it's coming here saying and it receives a reference and says showing Buffy and comes out and we are done and it says see out main and it main ends ends at the moment uh, and as soon as uh, it goes out of scope obviously the destructor is gonna get called removing Buffy the animal from the memory are we okay with this <laughs> Yeah, so in here, I just, for rule of three, if you want to do some trying and things like that with this, I created, uh, it, it is not related to what we want to do, but I created these things for the copy constructor and copy assignment. So in case you want to, uh, you want to try different things in here and see how copy assignments and, and these work, you can simply uh, uh, uncomment uh, these. You can simply uncomment these and now you have rule of three in here, although it's not necessary, but now you can go in your main and try different things like in here, it, it, it becomes obvious that this A over here is not actually an assignment. And now we can actually have over here something like animal B and I can, I can actually say B is set to A and this is not a, a uh, initialization anymore it's actually a call to assignment operator and um, if I remove the ampersand over here then it's gonna be animal X set to a and uh, therefore the copy constructor is gonna get called in here and the destructor so if I run the program now you will see that the output is completely different now it's not gonna look the same so if I run the program now stop and run the program now you will see that lots of stuff are going to happen behind the scene which essentially it creates Buffy the animal then create nameless the animal default constructor line 14 then sets the nameless to Buffy that's actually as assignment operator then A is gonna act and when it wants to show the animal it's gonna first copy the Buffy and put it in X show it and afterward it's gonna uh, uh, when it returns that is going to uh, to die essentially um, that X over here would get removed from the memory um, and um, uh, that's it uh, it's gonna show it and um, remove Buffy an animal in here and remove Buffy animal for the second time and that's that so um, it's just f for the test it has nothing to do with uh, inheritance and functions in hierarchy I just put it over there if you want to play with it uh, you have something to play with actually so now if I actually remove these things back to what it was before you're gonna see we're gonna have a very quiet uh, uh, implementation so if I come over here and remove these 
and set this one back to a reference then uh, nothing extraordinary is going to happen over here even so you're not going to have setting and anything and everything goes back to normal uh, and that's B that is dying over there all right uh, are we okay with this all right so now we know what the animal is and let's see yes um when uh, the buffer uh, sorry uh the backing was on uh true um a uh, removing buffy the animal was planted three times i didn't understand especially before uh the one before end of may because why they're two dead oh why why one is dead before end of may yeah yeah because when you don't have a reference over yeah. here, Azusa. Uh, okay, now X I over get. here. Okay, so it dies at the end of. Okay, now you're okay. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, good. All right. So that's why I created that. And do it and play with it and and walk through it and see how things happen. So that's the animal. Um, now let's let let's see how we can actually create a cat out of this animal. So now, I'm gonna actually create. Uh, uh, add uh, a new project to this. Uh, add, 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 add. Existing project. Now I'm going to add cat. So let me close all the tabs and see what is a cat. So we have our animal. This is a simple animal. I removed all those and let me set this as startup project. Set this as startup project, and let me make my cell phone quiet. All right. Oh my God. All right. Uh, so that let's take a look at animal. So animal is exactly the same as you see. It's clean and nice. There is nothing over there. Um, and I did not do that initialization, so let me do that. So I have an animal, it says to nameless, and it acts and everything is there. And why the end if over here expected the declaration? Seriously, this Visual Studio is going bananas. I have no idea what is this in here. Expected a declaration. I have don't know what's going on with Visual Studio. After this update, the intelligence is gone bananas. Or maybe I made a mistake. Yeah, so uh, yeah. So now uh, I have the animal and animal CPP is exactly the same as you see. Um, it creates the, the animal as we did before and does the copy and everything is the same. But now I want a cat. Now, what is the difference between a cat and an animal? Can anybody tell me? What is the difference between a cat and animal? What additional thing a cat has to uh, an animal? It's kind of a funny thing, but let's see if you know. Anyone? No, my animal has a name. Yes, Armando, it has nine lives. And a cat has a number of lives that an animal doesn't have, okay? So we need to implement a better thing because an animal is a, a cat. Uh, to create a cat, our animal needs to have nine lives. So, But everything else is going to remain the same. So what I'm going to do to actually implement this, this is what I'm going to do. Let me set this thing back to what it was so my pole is ready. So now I want to create a cat. So what do I do? I'm not going to create all the things an animal has. A cat has everything that an animal has. I'm okay with that. All I need to do is to build over it. So what I will do is this. I'm going to create a cat. And I'm going to say a cat is an animal.
So by actually creating a class and say I'm publicly inheriting from animal, I am telling a cat has everything that an animal has. And essentially, if I, if I don't put anything in here now, it, it can run every single thing that an animal has. So it brings all the public actions of an animal into the cat. So for example, names in here, modifier and query for the name and everything will be added to cat as if cat has it. Obviously, if you create functions that are identical to, not overload, but identical to what uh, an animal has, as you see over here, I create the method called act, an animal has act. I do not have a move, move is commented, but animal has a move. I have a sound, animal has a sound, and cat is playful, so I'm going to add an additional thing to it, and I'm going to say a cat can play too. So these are the things that I added, and I create a constructor. In my constructor, the name by default is Garfield. If I have an animal, I don't know if you remember Garfield or not. You're too young probably for it. But, and it has a number of lives that is by default nine. So when I actually implement this and I create my cat out of the animal, in my constructor, I simply say, okay, create a cat. But because it wants to create a cat, it has to first build an animal because cat in an animal is an animal. And because I didn't mention how, a default cat is going to get created. Then I can do all the things I want to do with the cat. Set, set the name of the cat, set the number of lives to whatever I want, and then I'm going to say creating the cat with these number of lives. So the cat is going to have its own message done. And if anybody wants the cat to actually um, act, because I created a new function for the cat to be playful, not just act regularly like an animal, as an animal does as we see over here. So if we look at the animal, the animal just acts like an animal, but a cat has act playful like an animal. If that's the case, then this act what we call shadows the animals act. Why? Because the names are the same and compiler always picks the one that is closest to you. Now when I'm making a sound with a cat, I'm saying, hey, cat, first sound like an animal. So I can actually use what my parent has. So I can say first sound like an animal, then say meow. So now it first sounds like an animal, then it's going to say meow. So if you want to access any parts of your parent, well, you use it with the scope resolution. I'm going to walk through everything and we'll see. And when I say over here play, obviously animal doesn't have a play method, therefore it doesn't do any, it, it, it has, there is no conflict and there is no need for any kind of caring at the moment. And moving, we will say cat move like an animal. It, no improvement in there. And therefore, everything happens over there. And now I'm going to say destroy the cat. And I'm going to mention over here when the cat is going to be gone. Now, in my main, to see actually how these things work, I'm going to create Fluffy the animal. And I'm going to say act, move make a sound, play, and then we'll see how everything's going to end. So are we okay with everything before I start walking through it and see how it works? Are we okay with this? So we have to understand that when I say create a cat, I am creating an animal who is more than just an animal. It's actually a cat. Uh, Shang Pu, you did not uh, say yes when I said everything is okay. Do you have a question or you're just not here? Oh, okay. All right, so let's start. So when I start actually running this program, did I say that startup project? I did, I did, I did. So when I actually start doing that, when it wants to create a cat, because a cat is essentially an animal, and I did not mention how to create an animal, it goes to the default constructor. So as you see, it comes over here. It wants to build a cat. It cannot because cat 
is an animal. First, it has to build the animal part, as you see. Now, it's going to say name is nameless. Why? Because it doesn't know how to create the animal. An animal had a default constructor that sets it to nameless. So therefore, it becomes initially nameless. And therefore, it's going to say, I am creating an, a nameless animal. But then right after that is done, now the animal part is built, cat kicks in and sets the, ki the cat's name to Fluffy. And therefore, now it's going to go override, and as you see, it actually calls the name of the animal. So you see, an animal has a name, setter for a name, but a cat does not. Because it does not, when you say, when in cat it says name, it actually calls the name of its parent, because parent has it. And therefore, it actually goes over there and actually, uh, oh, the string copy. It, act <laughs> it actually goes over there and sets the name to Fluffy. And now it creates, it sets the additional attribute of cat to number of lives. And number of lives is created. Now it's going to say create, creating uh, uh, Fluffy the cat with five lives. Apparently it was killed five times before, four times before. But anyways, now Fluffy is created. Now it comes back over here. When it says act, because cat has an act of its own, it's not going to go to the act of the, of the animal. It goes to the act of cat and it says, I'm going to uh, uh, act playful Fluffy the cat. So it's going to, Fluffy the cat is going to act playfully. Then, when it says move, because cat does not have a move, it goes to its parents and says, you don't have a move, I'm going to call the move of your parent. It's not shadowed, therefore uh, it's going to move like an animal. Now, we're going to say make a sound, when it wants to make a sound, because cat actually shadowed the sound of an animal, it goes to the sound of cat. But because we wanted to not, we, do, we, did, we did not want to completely shadow the, the animal sound, therefore we are reusing that code and we are saying, hey, when a cat is making a sound, first it's going to sound like an animal, so it actually calls the animal sound. And as you see, the call over here is done with the scope resolution and class's name because this is not an object that we are calling. It's not an instance. It's, parts of, it's part of itself. It's the animal part of the cat. Therefore, it says, hey, animal part of me, make a sound. And that's what it's going to actually make a sound. Then it comes back and does a meow too. So it not only sounds like an animal, but also it says meow. And now it comes back in here and says play. Play has nothing to do with animal. It's a feature of cat. And therefore, it's going to just be uh say the uh what does it say fluffy the cat is playing and main ends then it goes to the destructor and when it goes to the destructor always remember when you build things one over another let me see what i have over here when i was at school i used to do uh I used to uh, uh, use uh, uh, markers to show this, but I don't have it, so I'm going to use this. So, this is my animal. This is my cat. Okay? When I build a cat, I am building a cat over an animal, so it has two parts. It's cat, and then it's animal. When we created it, because you are building a cat, you have to set the foundation first that is an animal, then you put the, put the cat over it. Are we okay with this? All right. But now, if I want to remove the animal from the memory, if I want to remove the animal from the memory, there are two parts that wants to be removed. Which one has to get removed first? It's the reverse order. Now the animal is going to get removed first. And then after that, the cat is going to get removed. Okay? So always the destructors are called 
in a reverse order that's why when it actually calls back it first goes to to the animal it says removing cat uh removing fluffy the cat and then after it's it's done it goes back and removes the animal part and therefore it says removing fluffy the animal are we okay with this this was when I actually defaulted the, uh, the, the cat. So when I created the cat, as you realized, first a nameless animal got created, then I change it to Fluffy. I don't want that. I want to initialize. I, don't, I want to initialize the, uh, the cat as it gets created. When the cat is created, I don't want a nameless animal to get created. I want it to be fluffy right off the bat, not to first set it to something and then set it to something else. What can we do? Let's come over here. So I don't want the uh, animal to be defaulted. What can I do in here? Didn't I have a constructor that actually gets the name of the, the cat? We did. So what do I do? I simply say over here, animal, and I'm going to pass the name to it. Okay, so now I'm setting the animal to the name right off the bat. Are we okay with this? Everybody has to answer to this. Everybody has to listen and a think and answer. Again, I'm going to do it one more time. Everybody answer. Think about what I just said and see. Wait, I have a question. Don't say anything, Armando. Don't say anything, Armando. Okay. Okay. So I want to ask again. Did what I just do is, are we okay with what I just did? And if you say no, you have to explain why. Okay. So is, is, are we okay with this? <laughs> Everybody said no, but one person. <laughs> and some people are hesitant. Okay, can so one of those people who said no, can you say why you are not okay with this? Uh, because we cannot call the constructor. We can, because yeah. we cannot call a constructor. Now take a look and see what happens when I do this. I'm not going to get any error, but just take a look and see what's going to happen. I'm going to run this step by step so you'll see what's going to happen. So as you see, oh, it's going to give me an error. Redefinition of the par parameter, the name. Huh? Oh my God, they they fix this. It's um, why is it giving me the redefinition? Let me re rebuild. Rebuild. Nice. They are actually giving an error message. They didn't use to. Okay, so in here I'm. I, if you go with an older compiler, the animal that you see over here would actually become a. Uh, 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 a nameless animal okay so the, I'm gonna say act <laughs> now now it shouldn't give me an error let me see if it's gonna give me an error now see now it's not giving me an error so good so they actually add that to the compiler I'm, I'm, I'm happy so now as you see that thing that I created over there if I actually come over here and I go if I go F11 it goes to the default constructor still and it becomes nameless so it creates the nameless animal as you see it creates it creates the nameless animal so i didn't do anything in here then it comes in here and now it creates a nameless animal out of the name so as you see it's going to say actually creating something 
Fluffy the animal. Then I'm calling its Axel compiler doesn't doesn't complain. Now it goes over here and says it acts like an animal. And immediately after that, that nameless is going to die. Take a look. So it's going to say act like an animal. Uh, creating Fluffy the animal. So that's a nameless that it create. When I say nameless, it means it doesn't have a reference. It doesn't have anything to behold. And it's going to say act like an animal. Then it's going to say remove Fluffy the animal. So in this one line, it created animal, acted it, and deleted it. Now it goes back and does the rest. So you cannot call a constructor. I'm, so, I'm shocked and I'm very happy that it actually he gave an error over here. Uh, compilers didn't do that. Um, use it. Use your compiler. See if your compiler actually uh, does it or not. They would actually silently accept it and they would go through it. Um, but anyway, so that's wrong. Okay. So we understand this it, that it's wrong. We can't do this. Are we okay? We understand that it's wrong. All right, Azusa. No, Jay. Tell me, what's going on? Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. In animal functions, why we uh, created function type void? Which one? All, all function type, like name function, its type is void. So, uh, we didn't used to do like uh, object reference. Yes, 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 yes. This is just for, for example. That is my preference, Jay. Oh, okay. My preference is... If you are returning void, it's a waste. Don't return void so you can have a uh, cascading effect. So if you are doing void, the better choice is to actually return an animal reference and return over here uh, uh, animal reference, animal reference, and return this. Uh, so we can do return this, right? Yeah, we can do this. That's very fine. And the good thing is that after acting, you can ask it to do any, something else. So in here now, I can say dot move. You see that? Yeah. But I couldn't do it if it was void. You oh, follow yeah. that? Yes. Okay. And that's why I always say it's not... It, it When you are returning void, it's a better I, better thing to do. It's better to return a reference of... Uh, the current object in case you want to cascade it to something else but because i'm teaching specifically inheritance now i don't want to go through all those fancy stuff therefore uh uh oh, oh therefore i am going to return void are we okay with that jay yes okay so that's that so in here i can't say you can't call a constructor so if I cannot call a constructor what good does it do like I don't like it like I I I, I want to be able to initialize it so what do I do there is a place again I call this place initialization area this is far that's calling of this thing initialization area is the space between a constructor and the open curly bracket that you see. Do we understand which area I'm saying? Are we okay with what I just said? This is initialization area. This is the place in which you can put your requests in. You are not calling a function. You are not calling a construct constructor. You are asking the compiler to use a specific constructor to build the parts of me. Therefore, instead of just defaulting, what I can do, instead of defaulting, I'm just going to copy this. So in here, and in here, I'm going to say animal will be default defaulted before being set <coughs> being set to uh, the name okay so 
to prevent that, I can actually come to the initialization area and ask the compiler, hey, when you are building the cat, use this constructor of animal and pass the name to it. So this is not an, a call, but it's actually initialization. Okay? So by doing something like this, I can actually tell to the compiler to create the animal using the name and therefore setting the name won't be necessary anymore because animal will be cre get created and initialized out of the bat with the value that is provided to the constructor of cat. Um, are we okay with this? So requests can be made in the initialization area area I'm gonna say that is the space between the uh, of the constructor and curly bracket between the constructor and the curly bracket where the body of the constructor begins. So request cast can be made in the initialization area to um, build the objects by initializing by uh, by uh, constructors 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 of different parts okay so <coughs> you can request the constructor of animal to be called in here so the cat gets created using an animal. Abdullah, you said no. Abdullah. Abdullah. Hey, professor. Yes. Uh, yeah, professor. Go ahead. Uh, you, you said no when I said I'll be okay with this. Yes. If you can if you repeat this part again, it's oh, not okay. clear so with you. When I actually do it over here, if I actually put the put the the animal in here and pass the name, because it's done separately in a line, it creates a temporary nameless of the object. Uh, uh, does not initialize. Does not initialize but initialize but creates a temporary nameless animal do we are we okay with this abdullah yes professor okay i understand now this we don't want to happen to tell to the compiler not to create a temporary nameless object but to build the parts of the cat, which is an animal. Cat has an animal part. I, I'm going to tell to the compiler, build my animal part, initialize my animal part using such and such, which in this case is the name that is passed. Therefore, when the program actually runs, when Fluffy the cat wants to get created, the name Fluffy will be passed to the constructor of the animal part of the cat. And therefore, the cat will be built using the Fluffy the name. And therefore, we will not have an animal created. It creates the animal right off the bat with the name Fluffy. And now, in here, it's going to say... Uh, uh, creating the cat with this number of lives and as we see over here it says creating fluffy the cat with number of lives so uh, so now I can actually correct that thing instead of just repeating the thing I can say creating fluffy the animal 
in here I'm going to say as a cat with as a cat with these many lives. So now when it's actually running, we will see that the cat actually gets created as an animal. So it comes over here and when it prints, we're going to we'll see it says creating Fluffy the animal as a cat with five lives. And, and therefore, uh, I actually requested the initialization. Are we okay with this? I'm, I'm okay with it, but like, uh, just real quick, uh, at what point did it went, did it go from uh, right there on line 18, mm -hmm. uh, from a nameless to fluffy again? It's not going to go to nameless anymore. Oh, okay, it just in initializes it. It, and then... it literally creates, it literally, it cr because cat to, for cat to be built, remember I said for cat to be built, first you have to create an animal and then create a cat over it. Are we okay with that, Armando? Yes. Now, creating this cat, this animal, is done using the name that is provided to the constructor. Therefore, we're not going to have a nameless animal anymore. The animal will be fluffy right when it gets created. Okay. Okay? Not only that, Armando, bear with me. We can do that to any part of cat. Take a look at this. So, cat has an animal part, correct, Armando? Yes. It also has number of lives, correct? Correct. We can actually ask the compiler to initialize this too, not to have garbage first and then be set to lives. So we can actually bring it over here <clears throat> and put it right over here. We can actually say M number of lives and pass the number of lives to it. So now, if we look at the constructor of cat, it initializes all its parts, its animal part, even its number of lives. So none of these will have any garbage in it at the moment of creation. Are we cool with this? Yeah. All okay. right. So now let's run it and see how it happens. Everyone else, are we okay with this? All right. So now if I actually run the program, you will see that it works the exact same way. Now if I actually come over here and I actually get into the constructor, you will see first it's going to create the animal part exactly with the name Fluffy. And then number of lives will be set right off the bat. So number of lives is now five and it doesn't need to set it to anything anymore because it's initialized with that value. Now, to, to kind of put more stress on what I just mentioned, to just tell you that this is initialization, we can actually use the initialization notation for these initializations in the initialization area, which means instead of writing with parentheses over there, as if we are calling the constructors, we can actually use the universal initialization notation for this and say number of lives and the name are being initialized to the values that they have. And I'm just going to bring it down over here so, so we can actually have. So, so this is the initialization area. I'm going to support like this, something like this. Initia, any. Initialization <laughs> area. Okay, and then the function begins here. Constructor, so the, the, the body begins. Okay, here. So now, as you see, I have the cat, then I initialize the parts and then I start at the body of the constructor. So this is like the ugly part, but one like with comments and everything. So let's actually comment that. Oops. Let's actually comment the whole thing. Copy, bring it back down. And I want to put a clean one over here too. So it's not like embedded with 55,000 different things. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to do like this. Remove that. Remove this. 
just to show you how clean the code can be and okay so the body begins right there and this becomes our constructor so essentially the constructor is the constructor initializing the parts of the class one by one then beginning the uh, the body of the class so let's put it over here so we can see so, and the beginning of the body of the class or put it over here um, are we okay with this <laughs> So the constructor doesn't actually even need a body then? The constructor doesn't need a body then. Uh, of, if you don't want to, no. Not at all. If the debugging is off, nothing happens. So you just put a close curly brackets in front of it. Yes, absolutely right. So if I didn't want to do any debugging messages in here, my the body of my constructor would have been completely blank, which is perfectly okay. Are we good? Uh, and the uh, initialization area is only for constructors? Only for constructors, because uh, you are mentioning it, Jay, function? yourself. Jay, you are mentioning it yourself. You said initialization. When does yeah, initialization yeah. happen? It, yeah, at it the moment of creation, moment correct? Of creation. Yeah. And what is called at the moment of creation? Constructor. constructor. Therefore, initialization area only applies for constructors of any kind copy constructors, any kind of constructors that you have. All right? Okay. Good question. Thank you. So now we have all these. So the constructor is created and everything. Lots of comments over here. Go through them and read them and, uh, to understand how things happen. Um, and now we have a nice little cat created for us with all the good stuff that we want. So which brings us uh, to the next thing. What's the time? It's it's one thirty. We have <coughs> yeah. I'm I'm gonna need to get take a break. Uh, so I just want you to to uh, to appreciate and understand that what I am creating in here, what I am creating here is an is a relationship. So. Whenever you hear a word saying a cat is an animal, then it means class cat public animal. Okay? But when I say, but when I say a cat has number of lives then it's not inheritance anymore it is just one of its properties do we understand this so is a is inheritance has a is just properties I am a human being which means Farlad has inherited all the things a human being has but I have eyes okay which means I'm not eyes I have eyes eyes are part of me although they are separate objects that I own and they're very complicated but they are part of me and I'm not inheriting anything from them are we okay with this all right good 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 so so uh, I'm going to save this and I'm going to actually add these things to, to the repo right now. I'm going to push it right now. <coughs> I'm going to push it to the repo right now. So this one, this one. These are the ones I want to add. Okay, commit. And I'm going to say, what am I going to say? I'm going to say, uh, 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 this is ex essentially what we, so, so it's functions, um, 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 derived class, derived classes, 
and functions in hierarchy. Let me pull first. push all right so now you have them and we're going to come back and we're going to continue with the rest of it so let's have like five ten minutes break and we'll be back please remind me to could resume recording when we come back Okay, uh, any questions before we continue? Any questions? Sarah and Vivi? Sarah? All right, good, 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 good. So we are all here. Now, so again, just to uh, remind, like quickly go through what we discussed down to this point, we, <coughs> uh, we had an animal, uh, we um, created a cat out of that animal, and we said that when we create a cat, when we inherit essentially a cat out of an animal, it's an is a relationship. Cat is an animal. Therefore, it gets all the specification and properties of an animal, and it will have access to all the uh, all the uh, public properties of the animal directly, which means anything that is public, a cat can access. And the private properties of an animal can be accessed indirectly using the public methods that we have. But if in a cat I try to manipulate M name directly, it won't allow me to do that. If I actually go to the cat over here and instead of having, for example, if I, if I go over here and I try to somehow change the name, say, for example, doing... Um, str ut the str copy or uh, say uh, m name and I'll set zero and I'm gonna set that one to character zero so I want uh, I, if I want to nullify the name if I do that it's gonna tell me that this is declared and yada 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 is inaccessible you cannot access this thing because this is essentially a private part of the animal and cat cannot access it so private properties of parent is not ex is not accessible private properties of parent are not accessible okay are we okay with this oh <laughs> my apologies i gotta fix the question my apologies i'm gonna do it again so it's are we okay with this are we okay with this <clears throat> all right so now that we are okay with this let's see what happens if we actually uh, fir first of all we have to see if it is possible to let me just run this okay so we're going to go back to a clean cat and animal again. So uh, I'm going to bring up another project over here. I'm going to leave cat as is. And I don't want to make it too messy. That's why uh, I, I, I will kind of switch back to what it was before, exactly how it was before. So I'm going to add this one. <clears throat> so we have the animal again exactly as how it was and we have the cat exactly as how it was and and the the, the cat of ours is uh, setting the animal a number of lives as is but the message over here is different let me fix this message like the other cat 
uh, and set this at startup project and bring the other cats message that was more suitable uh, copy that and put it in this one <coughs> okay so now take a look at this we uh, we have the cat and the animal <coughs> what happens if I refer to a cat as an animal first of all do we understand that you can refer to me as Fardad as a human you can say Fardad you're a human Fardad you're a male human you can call me a human also you can call me a Fardad you can call me Fardad okay um, so do we understand this are we okay with this it, 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 a very bad example for it that is not correct at all is that my name is Fardad but you can call me with my last name Solimanlu so I am from the Solimanlu family you can call me with my last name it's something like that which is not a good example really but I am using it anyway so, <coughs> so we can we can refer to a cat as we to a with to an animal can I refer uh, uh, to an animal as a cat oh the answer is no obviously and so actually somebody said yes no you can't okay you cannot refer like a cat could be an elephant you can call an sorry an animal could be an elephant you cannot call an elephant a cat okay an animal can be anything it cannot be only only a cat it could be many different things so we, it's all you can always call a child with his parents reference or pointer what I want the point that I want to make so a child could be always referred to as with a parents pointer or a reference do we understand this are we okay with this but this action has its own consequences uh, to tell you what the consequences are let me just explain this my father actually used to be a teacher too but he used to teach mechanics okay so with inheritance this is what happens if you tell me Fardad teach I'm gonna teach computer science but if you tell me Mr. Soleiman Lu teach suddenly I'm gonna start teaching mechanics because if in me and my father inheritance was like programming and I would get all my father's features I my father's skills I wish I, I wished <laughs> but if I could actually do that then if you tell if you if you say Farda teach I will teach C++ if you say Mr. Solimanlu teach then I'm gonna start teaching mechanics which is kinda crazy but that's essentially what it is in in C++ in, in an object-oriented program if you refer to a child as a parent it forgets that it's a child and it only uses the parent parts uh, do we understand this let's see let's see it in action and see what it means take a look so now our cat over here can play and everything um, sorry yeah, we are here so let me just yeah so our cat can do play and all the good stuff but when I come to main over here let's take a look and see what happens I am creating cat P pepper okay so P the name is pepper then I'm creating a dynamic cat called fluffy and I'm gonna hold it in C then I'm gonna create a, a dynamic cat and hold it in a in a in an animal pointer which is essentially pointing to a cat using an animal pointer or I create a reference to a cat and I hold a uh, reference to a to an animal and I hold the cat in it let's see what's going to happen and I can do the exact same thing so this like I can actually create an animal um, animal PTR2 and I'm gonna set this one to uh, to C so as you see okay so now if you look at it AP uh, so P is a cat 
reference holding a cat and if I run the program this is what happens okay so I'm gonna I, I'm creating a cat as you see called pepper and it's what happened okay yeah I'm creating a um, an animal a, a cat so it's gonna be uh, creating a pepper the animal as a cat with nine lives that's what it creates now I'm gonna create a cat called fluffy but this one is dynamic okay so I'm gonna create that one and this one uh, creating fluffy the animal and fluffy has nine lives too then I'm gonna create another cat called Tom but Tom does not have a pointer of cat anywhere it is kept in an animal pointer so when I actually run this it doesn't make any difference it's gonna create Tom the animal as a cat with nine lives so it is a cat but it's only kept in an animal pointer and then I create an animal pointer to pointing to C and an animal reference holding the reference of cat uh, are we okay down to this point so now when I actually come over here and I say P act because P is pepper the cat and it is a reference to a cat everything is gonna work exactly like a cat as you see so act playful like a cat move pepper uh, like the cat sound like pepper the animal and uh, say meow and pepper the cat is playing so all these things happen because it is a cat holding an object of a cat very normal and everything is okay are we okay with this all right and I'm gonna do the same thing over here with the uh... actually that's fine so now I have in here I'm uh, in here I I am pointing to a cat using a cat pointer so again a cat pointing to a cat therefore all the actions and everything is exactly like a cat with absolutely no problem are we okay with this now the strange thing happens when I have an animal reference actually pointing to a cat holding the reference of a cat take a look AR is essentially a new name for P AR is a new name for P but the difference is that AR is an animal P is a cat what happens when AR that is actually holding the cat pepper how is it going to act when you look at it you will see that it completely forgets that it's a cat and it just like acts like an animal act like pepper the animal move like pepper the animal and sound like pepper the animal and no cat is accessed so essentially when you look at a child using parents reference all the reference that is seeing is the parent and child is never to be found uh, nowhere to be found are we okay with this all right Vivi Smith Raj Smith Raj are we good all right so now same thing happens with the animal pointer I have an animal pointer and please understand that this animal pointer has no access sorry this cat uh, this cat object has no access but an animal pointer so cat the Tom uh, uh, Tom the cat that was created over here with nine lives as you see only acts like an animal with absolutely no access to anything other than that so when I actually run it I don't know what happened why it's not running anymore oh there you go so when I run it 
as you see it acts like Tom moves like Tom the animal and cat is nowhere to be found when I delete the pointer C so I want to say give the point give the memory back of C uh, uh, of the of the C object to the operating system when I do that because the pointer that I have is actually a cat pointer when it actually deletes that both constructors are called as you see over here I should have actually mentioned over here something like C out deleting deleting a cat pointed by a cat pointer okay now in here I'm gonna say deleting a cat pointing by an animal pointer and let's execute right before that so we can actually see what's happening so again I'm gonna run it right to that point so everything runs exactly the same okay now the only difference is that it actually point it actually uh, prints a message for us so we can see actually what happens so now in here it's gonna say deleting a cat pointed by a cat pointer and when we do that the cat part is gone the animal part is done good now we're gonna say delete a cat pointed by an animal because the animal pointer only sees the animal part what happens only the destructor of animal is called and now we have memory leak so in here I'm gonna say see out cat part is not deleted and is a leak so and the main ends and everything else dies the way they are supposed to okay uh, are we okay down to this point okay all right so as you see we have a problem in here the problem our problem over here is that when you refer to a child using a parent pointer you may have a leak and essentially the child becomes completely inaccessible and you cannot access any parts of the child using the the the, the parent reference or a parent pointer do we understand this not only that not only that the problem is even more than that that if you actually create a child using the parents pointer then it's impossible to deallocate it you are forced to have memory leak there is no way I can remove that from memory cat that is pointed for AP will have memory leak with absolutely no cure and there is no programming way nothing I can do to actually remove the cat from memory and I will have memory leak over there because I have a parent pointer dynamically holding uh, a child with no other access do we understand this so how do we fix this problem this is how we fix it we fix the problem like this now the cat that so as so just to show you over here 
the code that I have is identical to ha what I have to the animal. I added an animal called rat over there too. Uh, so uh, that rat thing is an animal that we have like we created. But we can do something amazing with respect to functions that you have for your parents. If the functions that you have you want to always to be upgraded no matter how you refer to a to a child if you want to make sure that you ha if you have a child the actions of the child is called at all times no matter how you refer to a child as a parent or a child one more time we had this problem the problem was that when we actually created a child and we had that child pointed to by a parent, the child parts became inaccessible. We want to guarantee that when an object is created and it inherited out of another object, another class, a class is inherited out of another class, any object of the child pointed no matter with what type of pointer, parent or child, we want to guarantee that always the latest version of the function of the parent is created, is called. We can always do that with simply adding the keyword virtual in front of the function. So I did not change anything over here other than adding virtual to the action, virtual to the sound and virtual to the destructor. So the destructor over here is now virtual, guarantees the latest version of the destructor is called no matter what I have. The virtual of sound, the sound is virtual. It means no matter what type of sound I have, if there is an, a newer version of sound, that's going to get called. Move is not virtual, so it dooms doomed to always to be move if the parent is calling a child but act is not like that so now if I actually run the program compare it to what we had before <clears throat> I added an animal to it. obviously if you create an animal virtuality doesn't come to play because there is no child who cares what is it pointed at or what is it pointed to we don't care the 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 virtuality comes to play only reference or pointer of a base class of a parent class is referring or pointing to a derived or a child class and how it works it is like this now if I actually run this you will see the difference the difference would be as such when I have an animal it's an animal no inheritance I don't care what it is when I have a cat cat the uh, cat again uh, uh, a reference of a cat holding a cat I don't care because virtuality comes to play only if a parent reference or pointer is pointing to a child therefore this one I don't care either it's a pointer of a cat pointing to a cat this is where things become interesting I have an animal pointer pointing to a, an, a, a dynamic uh, object of type cat and I have an animal reference holding the uh, becomes a new name for cat the pepper now if I actually uh, uh, for pepper the cat um, so if I now run this you will see that for these we do not care these are all act like a rat because they are an animal and that's what it is a cat holding a cat we don't care everything works like a cat no problem I have a pointer to a cat Point, I have a pointer of a cat pointing to a cat. I don't care. No virtuality is in point. But now I have an action, an, an AR that is an animal reference and calling the action. Because action is virtual, when the action is called compiler checks, do I have a newer version? Yes, I do. So it goes to the cat and calls that one. Then it comes back over here. AR move. Do I have a newer version of move? 
I don't know because it's not virtual. It's not virtual. I'm doomed to always call move. Therefore, move is not going to get upgraded. But the sound of an animal, it is virtual. Therefore, the sound of a cat will be called instead. And not only that, when I actually use the pointer, it works the exact same way. All the actions and sound that are virtual, the latest version are called, but move that is not virtual remains exactly what it was as an animal. And when I delete a cat that is pointed by a cat, I don't care, no virtuality here, cat to cat, nothing. But when I am pointing to a cat using an animal and I am deleting that because the, virtu the, the destructor is virtual, then the latest version of the destructor is called, which is the cat. Therefore, no memory leak and life is beautiful and everything is done perfectly. So virtuality. So from now on, remember, any class that you create, your destructor, no matter what you do, must be virtual to guarantee if inheritance happens, no leak is going to be there. So virtuality. If you go to an interview, they ask you, what is a virtual function? <clears throat> You're going to say a virtual function is a function that uh, a virtual function is a function that guarantees that the latest version of a function is called in a hierarchy of inheritance. Virtuality guarantees that the latest version of a function is called in the hierarchy of inheritance. <clears throat> and the, another question do we need to make a construct a destructor virtual? Yes, a virtual a destructor must be virtual at all times to make sure no memory leak happens in case inherit this object is inherited into a new one. And ladies and gentlemen, any class <coughs> that uh, we have, we call that any class, this, this becomes actually a, a class, a virtual base class, which essentially has virtual functions and you can use them and inherit it. So it guarantees that the action and the sound and the destructor, always the latest versions are called. Are we okay with this? All right. Okay, now although we had one session missed, but believe it or not, we are one half a week ahead of ourselves. So uh, I want you to study when you are going home. What you are going to study is going to be this because these things are related <clears throat> so much. I always mention them back to back. So we covered all these and also we covered virtual functions of the next week. So when you are going to review, review all these. And the next day you are coming in, the quiz is going to be on these three. So please review it. We're going to go back again the next week, starting from virtual function to review it and go through it. <clears throat> are we okay with the lecture today? Are we okay with what we've done today? Ma, are we okay? Azusa, are we okay? Ma, why, why we are not okay? Explain. Yeah, I still don't get why move function is doesn't have the virtual. Because I was a bad person. <laughs> sometimes, Ma, sometimes when you create a parent class, okay, you want the action, the 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 function of that class to be final. Nobody to be able to change it. That's when you actually make it non-virtual to make sure this is not upgradable. If you don't want something to be upgradable, you don't make it virtual. I just, it's not why, it's just for you to know that you can if the business logic dictates. Are we okay with this? Yes, sir. So it's not that I did it for a specific reason. I just gave you an example of what happens if I leave it as not being virtual. You have a choice. If you don't want something to change, don't make it virtual. Are we okay? Yes, thank you, sir. All right. Everybody, are we okay? <coughs>
Wait, 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 what did you say? If you don't want it to change, don't make it virtual? Yeah, if you don't want anybody to be able to improve this. Okay, got it. So don't make it virtual. It means this move is final. I want an anybody who's animal to always move, like me. <laughs> Obviously, if they create an animal and they use the reference of an animal to an animal, then move is shadowed, but it's not upgradable. Okay? Uh, so if uh, the move function is allocating the member variable, then because it is not virtual, it can cause a memory leak? No, no, no. Only the destructor that is the one that is causing memory leak. The rest, nothing happens. Oh, okay. So if, if destructor is not virtual, virtual, there is a danger of having memory leak if you have inheritance and you point to a dynamically allocated uh, uh, child. That's the only case, but because that may happen, it is always safe to make a destructor virtual. Are we okay with that, Jay? Yes. Okay, so to, to be safe, always, always, always make a destructor virtual, no matter what you do. So anything in a project, if I'm not mentioning what the destructor is, make it virtual. Okay? Okay. All right. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, I'm going to uh, probably not be available the rest of the day. I'm going to rest, but we'll see what happens, okay? If I'm available, I'm going to make the teams available. If I'm not available, I'm not there. Uh, have yourself uh, a beautiful day. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Well done. Have a good one. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.